It's been 20 years since the opening of the National Corvette Museum, the holy land for America's premier sports car. And while it's been in the news recently for something other than its prize collection, our FYI reporter Yolanda Vasquez has found that it doesn't have anyone in Bowling Green down in a hole. It's the sinkhole seen around the world and one that made the National Corvette Museum an internet sensation. It was uh, kind of a, a real uh, incident for us. Uh, it swallowed eight uh, classic Corvettes. More than nine months later, the 45-foot wide hole located in the museum's sky dome is still there, along with a handful of mangled cars. I had heard about it on the news, uh, but just to see it and to see everything around here, the dis you know, the destruction of the cars, unfortunately, it's, it's sad. Amazing, but, but sad. The last time I remember the cars, of course, they were all on display, and you could walk around and see them, of course, now they're all destroyed. More than, yeah, it's kind of disappointing. Retrieving the vehicles was a painstaking process. Some, like this 2009 ZR1 prototype known as the Blue Devil, started right up. Others suffered a more devastating fate. The museum, with help from General Motors, will restore three of the eight damaged cars and fill the gaping hole. The others will be part of a permanent exhibit. We have uh, faced adversity before, and uh, we've always been able to uh, overcome, and we didn't know how it was going to work out. Executive Director Wendell Strode says the sinkhole has been a blessing in disguise. The museum has seen a 60% increase in attendance over last year. Everybody's heard about the Corvette Museum. Yeah, so it was on our bucket list. This and the Bourbon Trail. I really love it. It's, it's very informative, more than the other museums I've been to. And there's a lot to see and do for both kids and adults. The museum, located near the Corvette assembly plant, captures the complete culture of America's most beloved sports car. I learned a lot um, just from the build to the ownership of it. And, you know, the people come together and they celebrate the car and it's pretty cool. The Corvette debuted in 1953 at the New York Motorama Show. It was named after a British Navy class of fast pursuit ships. Visitors will also learn about Zora Arcus Duntaw, better known as the godfather of Corvette. His ashes are entombed at the museum along with his fully loaded 1974 Corvette Stingray. Zora told him if you want a sports car, you've got to have some horsepower in it. And of course they hired him to be the first uh, Corvette chief engineer. Strode says the museum pays tribute to the vet's 60 year history from the first one built in 1953 to their continued success in auto racing. Did you know that instead of going to a dealership, you can pick up your brand new Corvette at the museum? For an additional fee, they'll do a pre-delivery inspection, detail your car, and then bring it out to Corvette Boulevard for everyone to see. Verrill and Sue Crutcher are the new owners of a 2015 Velocity Yellow Corvette convertible. They drove from Illinois to pick it up. This is the first Corvette we've ever owned, so it's for an experience for all of us. And if you're not able to drive off in your dream car, maybe you can attend one of their high-performance driver's training courses at the new NCM Motorsports Park. We've already proven to be a, a, a really nice economic driver for the area. General Manager Mitch Wright says they've hosted several events since their opening Labor Day weekend. Well, it's not only Corvette clubs. You know, we had Bluegrass BMW Club was our first paid client. So it's not Corvette exclusive by any means. We're, we're open to uh, all makes, models, marks. It really doesn't matter. So the next time you're in Bowling Green, Kentucky, make a pit stop at the National Corvette Museum. You'll learn a lot, see history in the making, and leave, like me, riding in style.